vegetative reproduction, artificial propagation. Plants reproduce by vegetative, asexual, and sexual processes. Vegetative reproduction includes all those processes of propagation in which a part of the plant's body is separated from the parent and gives rise to a new individual without any obvious changes in the protoplast. Regeneration of new plants from parts of vegetative organs is called vegetative reproduction or vegetative propagation. In artificial vegetative propagation, a portion is detached from the body of the mother plant and is then grown independently. Artificial propagation is usually done for quick production of new plants and to retain the qualities of the mother plant. This is usually carried out by three ways cutting, layering, and growing. Cutting is the most common method of vegetative propagation practiced by gardeners all over the world. A portion of root, stem, or leaf known as cutting is taken and rooted in the soil which develops into a new plant. Stem cuttings are most suitable for vegetative propagation as they readily establish themselves into independent plants by forming adventitious roots at the lower nodes and shoots from the axillary buds above the soil. Sugarcane, roses, grapes, tapioca, coleus, bougainvillea, carnations and several other plants are largely propagated by stem cuttings. The length and the diameter of the cutting, age of the parent plant and the season are important in propagation by stem cuttings. The rooting medium can be soil, sand, vermiculite or any other substance. The selection of rooting medium is done based on its easiness for planting, subsequent removal of rooted cuttings and its capacity to hold sufficient moisture and aeration. Stem cuttings which are 10 to 15 centimeters long can be taken from any part of the main stem or its branches. When cuttings are taken from the current year growth which are often green, they are called soft wood cuttings while the cuttings which are taken from the older parts of the stem are called hardwood cuttings. In general, softwood cuttings root better than hardwood cuttings. Care should be taken to put the morphologically lower side of the cutting in the soil. Roots are formed at the lower end of the cutting and rooting is better if leaves and buds are also present on the cutting. Application of growth hormones like IAA, IBA and NAA is quite effective to promote rooting on cuttings. Root cuttings of lemon, tamarind, etc. when put into moist soil sprout, forming new roots and shoots. Sometimes cuttings of many plants do not readily form roots. In such cases, the second way of artificial propagation, that is, layering, is practiced to induce rooting. By layering, roots are induced in branches still attached to the parent plant. Layering is commonly practiced in many fruit trees and ornamental plants whose cuttings do not easily root. The two important methods of layering are mound layering and air layering. The technique of mound layering is practiced in jasmine, strawberry, apple, etc. The lower branch of the plant is bent down, close to the ground and covered with moist soil in such a way that its growing tip remains above the soil surface. This bent branch is called a layer. After a few days, the covered portion of the stem usually produces adventitious roots. The rooted branch is then cut off from the parent plant and grown as an independent plant. 
the formation of adventitious roots in a layer can be hastened by injuring the layer by tonguing, wringing, or notching. In tonguing, an oblique upwards cut is made on the stem. In wringing, a complete ring of bark, about 2 cm wide, is removed from the stem, whereas in notching, a V-shaped cut is given somewhere through the middle of the stem. Air layering technique, also known as gute, is usually employed in those plants where stem branches cannot be bent to the ground. Pomegranate, orange, guava, lychee, etc. are the examples of such plants. The stem is girdled, that is, a ring of bark tissue is removed or slit at an upward angle and then covered with moist moss or cotton and wrapped with a polythene bandage to prevent drying. In drier climate, an earthen pot with a hole at the bottom is hanged over the bandage in a convenient position and the two are connected by a soft cotton cord. The pot is then filled with water. Water, when trickles down the cord, keeps the bandage constantly moist. Oxins may be applied to the girdle region to promote the root formation. Adventitious roots are formed above the girdle portion. After rooting, the stem is cut off below the girdle portion and planted in the soil. Before planting, leaves are usually removed from the stem to prevent transpiration. The third way of artificial propagation is grafting. It is the process of joining together parts of two different plants in such a manner that they live as one plant. The grafting of plants is a widely used technique in horticulture to multiply the desired genotypes in mango, citrus, apple, pear, guava, among others. A portion of the plant is inserted into another plant of the same species or a compatible plant of different species or even genera. Of the two plants, the one rooted in the soil is known as stock and the other grafted on it as cyan. When the cambium of the stock plant comes into physical contact with the cambium of the cyan, both form new xylem and phloem simultaneously. Consequently, the stock and cyan become united and grow as one plant. It is the cyan which largely determines the type of plant one gets after grafting, although the stock may also have some influence. Before grafting, stock or cyan or both are dipped in an oxygen solution. This promotes an early union. The two main types of grafting are cyan grafting and bud grafting. In cyan grafting, the stalk may be only a root or a stump, and the cyan may be a small shoot bearing one or more buds. Cyan grafting is used to produce composite plants of economic benefits. The cyan is obtained from a plant with superior characters while the stalk is derived from a plant resistant to diseases and pests and efficient in absorption of water and minerals. Cyan grafting is further done in three ways whip or tongue grafting, wedge grafting and crown grafting. In the first type, that is, whip or tongue grafting, the stock and cyan, almost of the same diameters of 1 to 1.5 cm, are given oblique cuts of 5 to 8 cm long, followed by a notch in the cyan. The notch is made in such a way that it exactly fits into the stock. The cyan is then inserted into the stock and tied firmly. All buds are removed from the stock but retained on the cyan. 
In the second type of cyan grafting, that is, wedge grafting, the stock and cyan are of nearly the same diameter. A V-shaped notch is made in the stock, while the cyan is cut like a wedge. The cyan is then inserted into the stock and the two are tied firmly. In crown grafting, which is the third type of cyan grafting, the diameter of the stock is several times greater than that of the cyan. Thus, many cyans can be grafted on a single stock. The lower ends of the cyans are cut into long wedges and are inserted into the cuts made on the stock. They are then tied firmly and the wound is sealed with grafting wax. The second type of grafting is bud grafting. In this type, the cyan consists of only a single bud accompanied with a portion of the living tissue. A T-shaped incision is made in the bark of the stalk. The bark is then gently raised on edges and the cyan is inserted into the incision. It is then firmly fastened with strings. The bud germinates after some time and becomes a part of the new plant. Roses, peaches and some other fruit trees are propagated by using bud grafting. Tissue culture techniques are now being used for effective vegetative propagation of several horticultural and agricultural crops. These techniques of propagation which involve cell, tissue and organ culture are collectively called micropropagation. In recent years, the technique of tissue culture is being increasingly employed to raise a large number of plantlets from a small tissue. The advantage of this over the conventional techniques is that in a relatively short time and space, a large number of plants can be produced. For micropropagation, axillary buds, shoot, apices, or any other plant part can be used as an explant. Virus-free plants can be produced if shoot, apical, meristems of about 0.25 millimeters long with one or two leaf primordia are inoculated. Explants are properly sterilized when collected from the field. Multiple shoots can be obtained by inducing callus. Plants produced in culture are carefully transferred to the soil. They are planted first in vermiculite and kept under high humidity for 10 to 15 days and then gradually taken to the greenhouse and can be transferred to the soil after 4 to 6 weeks. Direct regeneration of shoots can be achieved from the explant without the intervening stage of callus tissue. Any explant, shoot, leaf, cotyledon, hypocotyls, etc. can be made to differentiate as shoot buds, which can be made to root on a rooting medium, thereby producing the whole plant. Tissue culture techniques are being commercially used for micropropagation of orchids carnation, gladiolus, chrysanthemum, and many other ornamental plants. This technique is also useful in producing healthy plants in several important crops like potato, tapioca, and sugarcane. Thus, vegetative propagation is a rapid, easier, and less expensive method of multiplying plants which have poor seed viability or prolonged seed dormancy. It also makes possible the propagation of plants like banana, seedless grapes, oranges, rose, etc. that have lost the capacity to produce seeds through sexual reproduction. Plants raised through vegetative propagation are the exact genetic copies of the parent showing him characters. Such a population of genetically identical plants derived from an individual is called a clone. 
Artificial vegetative propagation provides excellent methods of propagation of desirable varieties of economically important plants with the least attention and in the shortest time. Yield of fruits can be increased by grafting high yielding varieties of stocks of the varieties which have low yield but are better adapted to a particular region. Micropropagation is useful in raising disease free plants. However, vegetative propagation requires technical expertise. Since vegetative propagated plants do not have tap roots, such plants are easily uprooted in storms. Besides, it does not involve meiosis and the fusion of gametes. Hence, this process is not helpful in developing new varieties. In spite of a few drawbacks, vegetative propagation is a widely used technique in horticulture which helps to develop desirable varieties of fruits, as and crops of great economic value.